Good afternoon and welcome back to the Urban Preparedness Program. I am your host, the Urban Cockroach. Today, we're going to talk about something that's been brought up to me by a number of people. Uh, most importantly, um, it's been brought up to me by somebody who's been viewing the channel. She is a single mother of two children. Uh, she would like to know how to protect her home if she's bugging in. But really, I think what it comes down to is even if the shit never hits the fan, people like her want to know how to protect their home from a home invasion or anybody else. So we're going to go over some very simple basics, um, and I hope you enjoy the show. All right, so first we're going to talk about a few basics. Huge, huge, huge mistakes that almost everybody makes during a home invasion or a bug-in scenario when you're trying to defend your house, okay? Mistake number one. Do not reach over and turn on the light, okay? If you reach over and turn on the light, whoever is in your home that you have no idea where they're located now knows exactly where you're located, okay? Never reach over and turn on the lights, okay? All it does is give away your position. It doesn't make you a more difficult target. If anything, it makes you easier to avoid or to attack, and it gives up the element of surprise. Now, when somebody breaks into your home, unless you are the target, 99.9% .9 of the time, whoever is breaking into your home has no idea if there's somebody home, they're assuming there's not anyone home, or they're assuming that there are less people in the house than they're capable of handling. So you do not want to tell them where you are by making a simple mistake, like turning on the light. Okay, another huge mistake, and this one, they hammer into us into the military. Directly in front of your door is referred to as the fatal funnel, because when somebody comes through the door, they're naturally pointed at the door. Okay, so you don't want to be standing directly in front of a doorway. And you're going to see from our side of the door why it's never a good idea to stand directly in front of a doorway. So the first thing you're going to do is get that 45 degree offset from your door. That way whoever's coming through the door cannot just shoot through the door and kill you. If they happen to know that you're there, maybe you tripped over something, you made a noise, or they heard you racking your gun, something like that. That brings me to my next step. If your home defense weapon is a shotgun, nobody is going to run away when they hear the shotgun go pump, pump, okay? If they're carrying a gun and they mean to do you harm, racking your shotgun only tells them two things. One, exactly where you are, and two, they now know exactly how many rounds are left in the tube of your shotgun if they know what the hell they're doing. Okay, if you run with one in the chamber already, you don't have to worry about pumping it, and you get that element of surprise at least for the first assailant. And nine times out of ten, when somebody breaks into your home, it's a single person. Very few people work in pairs or groups, and the reason for that is the best way to get away with, with a crime is if nobody knows your secret. So nine times out of ten, if somebody breaks into your home, it's just one person. So you only have to shoot one person if you're lucky. So don't give away your position by pumping your shotgun, okay? If they're coming in to kill you, all you did was tell them where you are. And that ruins the next portion of our gig here. The next thing you want to do is get that 45 degree offset from the door. Point your weapon directly at the door. If you can, prop it on something like I'm about to do here. I get low, and I get a bead on the door. Because when the door opens, I'm shooting whoever's in the door. Okay? Don't worry about whether or not they're armed. Don't worry about whether or not they're coming through really fast. Now, if somebody entered your home illegally in the middle of the night, they've already started breaking the law. You can assume that they mean to do you harm because they have entered your home illegally. Most states have a castle law. If your state has a castle law, Make sure you understand it, because in some states it's perfectly legal to shoot through your front door and kill somebody on the front porch if they're trying to make entry into your home. 
don't quote me on this because every state is different, but here in my state, we do have a castle law that allows us to shoot through the front door and kill an assailant who's attempting to make entry into our home, even without identifying whether or not they are armed. Okay, once you have made an eye-to-eye -eye contact with an individual, you no longer have the plausible deniability of whether or not they're armed. Okay, now that you know that they are unarmed, a prosecutor can throw you in jail for killing an unarmed man, even if they did just make an illegal entry into your home. So this is more along the concept of shit has not hit the fan and somebody just broke into your home. If shit hits the fan, by all means, you blow as many freaking holes in that guy as you absolutely need because that is going to save your life. Because if he comes in and steals your can of beans, that might be the only can of beans you have left in your entire house, and now you're going to starve to death all because you didn't shoot that guy who just murdered you by stealing your food. You need to think about it just like that. If he steals your food, you will die. He obviously doesn't care about your life because he took your food. Okay, So don't care about his and don't pull the trigger. There's nothing more dangerous in the world than an armed person who isn't willing to shoot. So, you get that 45 degree offset. I used my toolbox here. Now, my toolbox is made of aluminum. It's not going to stop bullets. But what it will do is round deflection okay, and round spalling. So whatever round passes through that is not heading in the exact same direction it was intended. And it's a much smaller damaged round. Now it's doing what's called a tumble. Who knows where it's going to impact, but chances are it's not going to pass through follow-on walls unless they come busting into your house with a 50 cal or something crazy like that. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to get that 45 degree offset. You're going to hide behind something, whatever it can be, and get solid. You always want to get low. If you don't have anything in your room at all, Lay on the floor and just point your gun at it. The reason you do that is because nobody ever does two things. They don't look down and they don't look up. So if there's a way to get above the door and aim down, absolutely do it. But chances are, they're not going to have time when you hear your front door get kicked in. <coughs> if you're laying in bed, roll out of bed. Grab your weapon, crouch down behind your bed. Use the bed to stabilize your weapon system and point at the door. Whoever opens the door, shoot him in the face. Okay. Always aim center mass. Okay, I said shoot him in the face, but always aim center mass. Okay, uh, We used to have a running joke um, when we were serving in the Middle East. They used to tell us we were there for hearts and minds, um, and we translated that to two in the chest and one in the head. Uh, <laughs> don't do that here in America. It's just going to get you thrown in the prison, and don't make that joke if you're standing in front of a jury. However, aiming center mass is important. If you do not think that you're talented enough to shoot somebody in the head, Aim for the pelvis. What people don't know is that their entire body's structural skeletal foundation is held together uh, by what is commonly referred to as the Cheerios or your pelvis bone. If you fire into that, it shatters like gra glass, and it does not matter how big that individual is, they are going to crumble like a wet paper bag in a rainstorm. Okay, So shoot for between the pelvis and the abdomen. Okay, don't try not to shoot the stomach. It's not going to kill anybody, and it's just going to spray intestines and shit and everything else all over your house. So, aim for that upper abdominal chest or that pelvis. Okay, the crotch is a great aiming point, especially if you're sitting low. Okay? You're not going to turn on flashlights. You're not going to turn on the light in your room. You're just going to grab your weapon, quietly duck down behind your bed, aim, and fire when they enter the door. Okay. If you are skilled at room clearing and CQB, what that stands for is close quarters battle drills, okay? If you're good at CQB, don't drop comments down below talking about how easy it is to clear a house, okay? This video isn't for you. Obviously, you already know what you're doing, okay? For those of you that do not know what you're doing, don't try to clear your house, okay? There's a million hiding spots in your house that any perp can get into, and just stand there and wait for you to approach. If they kick in your front door, they hear somebody moving in the house and they tuck themselves into a corner, and now you're trying to aimlessly clear through your house in the dark, you're gonna get shot, okay? Don't try to run to your kid's room, okay? It's just gonna make sounds that travel through the house, okay? Chances are whoever's entering the house has no idea what room you're in, what room they're in, okay? If you can, ease out into the hallway and, and face an entry point. Don't run from your room to their room. You're just going to give your position away, and it's going to make you a significantly softer target, okay? Don't worry about it.
once you shoot the bad guy, there's no more threat, okay? Of course, if they make entry into that room and they've just spotted your child, of course, go into that room and shoot them in the back of the head. All right, but now they're already concentrating on another individual. They're not actively listening and trying to find other people within the home, okay? However, I do not recommend getting up and running into another room. Just aim at the door, wait for your opportunity, and squeeze. Don't hesitate. Okay. Don't empty 16 rounds. Okay. One or two rounds, center mass, perfectly okay. If the target's still moving, by all means, take a deep breath, aim, slow, steady squeeze, and when that weapon surprises you by going bang and takes half of their head off, no more issue. Now, I really, really hope that I helped answer whatever questions uh, my viewer might have had when they asked it, because I'm not going to go into detail about, you know, how to fire out of your window or how to stack up barriers or how to properly clear a house because the person that asked the question is not a skilled warrior, okay? They're not prior duty military. They're not infantrymen. They're just average day people that want to know how to keep themselves safe if they bug in. <laughs> All right, so that pretty much covers the basics of defending your home as a single person. Uh, if you have multiple people in your home, hopefully they're all doing the same thing in their respective rooms. Now, if you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, please drop them down in the comments below. If you liked my video, give me a firm thumbs up so I know that you liked my video. If you absolutely hated my, middle, uh, my video, the best middle finger you can give me is the thumbs down. Hit that too. I don't mind. Either way, tell me about your feelings in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit subscribe uh, so that I know you want to see future videos. Before I let you go today, there's one last thing I want to talk to you about. Okay. We have all heard of the National Rifles Association, the Civilian Marksmanship Program, and a number of other organizations, but a little known and relatively newer organization that I think is pretty awesome uh, is the National Concealed Carry Association. Now, if you've never heard of the National Concealed Carry Association, the link is going to be down below in the description of this video, so go ahead and click on it. Um, Luckily, they were able to help us out, too, so if you do buy anything from their store, use the link that I provided in there. It's the National Concealed Carry Association, uh, forward slash reference, forward slash CC, forward slash the Urban Cockroach, and I'll put that down in the description below, too. That's going to get you 10% off of anything that you purchase on their store. Uh, now, normally I don't tell you, hey, go to a certain store and buy stuff, but the reason I'm all about the National Concealed Carry Association is because they use a large portion of the money that they make to support your personal Second Amendment rights. The money that you spend on the store doesn't just go to pay some rich corporation. It goes to make sure that no politician can take away your personal rights to defend yourself. And I thought that this was a great video to introduce them uh, to all of my viewers. Uh, so when you're done with the video, go ahead and drop down to the description and click on that link for the National Concealed Carry Association. And again, make sure you let them know I sent you. It's going to save you 10% if you do decide to buy anything while you're there. And that's about all I had to say today. So the urban cockroach is going to go ahead and scurry on out of here because i got other stuff to do today. But thank you very much. And if you haven't already, read your Constitution.